This video demonstrates Zmert's modularity regarding the evaluation metric, and will show you how to implement a new metric with only a modest amount of new code. As you know, MERT sets feature weights so as to maximize performance on a development set, as measured by an automatic evaluation metric, usually blue. But what if you want to optimize to an entirely new metric? Well, the code structure of Zmert makes it incredibly easy for you to do just that, and you only need to write code that describes the essence of your new metric. And so the amount of the new code depends only on the complexity of the new metric, and you won't have to worry about any bookkeeping or processing. I will show you, step by step, how you would go about implementing a new metric. First, let me show you what this metric is. It's something that I made up called the first last match metric, which only cares about the first word of a candidate translation and the last word. Given a candidate translation that we want to evaluate against a set of references, here's what FLM does. If the first word of the candidate translation matches the first word in, in any of the references, the candidate gets plus one. If the last word of the candidate translation matches the last word in any of the references, the candidate gets another plus one. So basically, a candidate gets a count that is between zero and two. For example, consider this translation of a Chinese sentence. Let's score it against two references available to us. The first word of the candidate, in, does not match the first word of either of the references, so we don't increment the count. The last word, embassy, does match the last word of one of the references, namely the first reference. So we increment the count by one. So the sufficient statistics for this candidate are one and two, as in it got one at out of a maximum of two. And we call them sufficient because they're the only two values you need to know to calculate the FLM score. Let's look at another example. This translation, grave against these two references, gets a count of plus two, since each of its first word and last word has a match. And here's a third example. If we grade this translation against the two references, it gets a count of zero, since neither its first word matches, nor its last word. Now, if these three translations are your candidate set, and you've calculated the sufficient statistics for each one, you can get the sufficient statistics for the entire set by summing up across the sentences to get three and six. Let's say that FLM is simply the ratio of those two values, in which case this candidate set gets an FLM score of 0.5. In other words, F the FLM score is a value between 0 and 1, with a higher score meaning better translation quality, and in that regard it is similar to the blue metric. So that's the code, that's the metric. Let's see how much code we actually need to write for a metric like this. If you look at the Java files that come with the Zmer distribution, you will see that in addition to the driver and the MERT core, there is an evaluation metric class, and then one more class definition for each individual metric. Evaluation metric is an abstract, is an abstract class that describes the aspects that are common to all metrics. Each of the individual class definitions extend the parent class, evaluation metric, they extend it with the specifics of that metric. So, for example, if we look at 0, 1 loss, we will see that it's a class that extends evaluation metric. And the only purpose of this class is to define how 0, 1 loss is different from the other metrics, and nothing more. So the class definition is pretty short, but not only because 0, 1 loss has a simple, has a simple definition, but because most of the data members and methods that describe 0, 1 loss are already covered by the parent class. Similarly, we will need a class definition for our new metric. To make your life easier, we provide this new metric Java template, which you should be use, which, which you should use as a starting point. So let's make a copy of it and call it first last match Java. And if you edit this, you will see exactly which points of the code need to be edited or modified, which makes the whole process even easier for you. The first thing you should do is make sure that the class name matches the file name. The second step is to decide which data members your evaluation metric needs. Now, you should keep in mind that you already have access to some data members of the parent class, the, the generic evaluation metric class. Let's take a look at these uh, data members, which we have repeated here as comments. You have access to the number of sentences in the merge set. You know the number of references per sentence. You have access to the references themselves, which are stored in a two-dimensional string array. So the rth reference of the ith sentence is stored as a single string um, in this array, indexed i and r. 
those data members are not only available to you, but you can also assume that they were already set by the parent class. So what additional data members does your new metric need? The only thing it needs really is access to the first word and last word of every reference. Now we already have access to the full references, so in theory we don't need any more data members, but let's extract the first and last word from each reference beforehand. This would speed things up quite a bit. So we'll have a two-dimensional array that stores the first words of the references, and we'll have another two-dimensional array that stores, that stores the last words of the references. And just to make, make clear what's happening here, I'll write this comment explaining what the cell indexed by i and r means. It simply stores the first or last word in the rth reference of the ith sentence. Okay? So this comment applies to both these data structures. The third step is to define the constructor, which consists of two parts. The first part processes this array, metric options, which is passed to the constructor as a parameter. And the second part is a simple call to this initialized method. So what, what, what are these metric options? Well, if your metric is at all parameterized, the metric options array would allow the user to specify those parameters. For example, blue has two options, the maximum n-gram length and how to define effective reference length. You can also think of those options as variations on the metric that don't warrant a separate class. Anyway, the metric we're dealing with right now, FLM, is pretty basic and doesn't have any variations. So it will get an array that is basically empty. There's not, no work to do here. The next step is to write the body of this initialized method. This method will set the data members of this class, will initialize them. Now we've already seen two such data members that we need to worry about, which are the two that we created here. But there are also three more data members that are inherited from the parent class that need to be set in this method. Now, didn't we say that the parent's data members are already set? Well, we said that some of them are, like the reference translations. But for those three data members, even though they are common to all evaluation metrics, their values depend on the metric itself. In other words, these data members are not unique to the individual metric, but their values are. And that's why they are inherited from the parent class but they are not set by it. At any rate, setting these data members is easy. First, pick a name for your metric. This doesn't need to be the same as the class name, just something easy for the user to remember. We've been referring to it as the FLM metric, so that seems like a good name for it. And then, you should indicate whether this is a metric that needs to be minimized or maximized. In the case of FLM, a higher score is better, and so to be minimized is false. This would also be false for blue, but it would be true for error metrics like WER and TER. And then we have the number of sufficient statistics, which in this case is two, since the FLM score is, is the ratio of two values. You only need two values to calculate it. And finally, we need to set the data members that we defined specifically for this metric, in this case, those two arrays. So to do that, we will just call, make a call to this method that we haven't written yet, but we will in a second. Okay, and that's the body of the initialize method. The next step is figuring out what the best possible score for your metric is and what the worst possible score is. For FLM, the best possible score is 1, and the worst possible score is 0. So we will have those two methods return those two values. Now, I want to say something here. Nowhere in this class will we use metric name, or to be minimized, or those two methods. Uh, those two methods. The code that does use them is in the parent class and in the MERT code. And that's what we mean when we say that ZMERT is modular regarding the evaluation metric. It treats the metric as a black box and expects all metrics to be able to tell it whether they should be minimized or not and what the best possible score is, etc. The nice thing for you is you don't need to write any code that asks those questions, only the code that answers them, which, as you see, is pretty easy to write.